Well, today I'm indulging myself by talking a little bit about a topic that my own research is based on. My challenge for myself today is to try to link together the topics of the cosmic web, urban planning, fingerprint recognition, and topological maps. And if I can do all that, hopefully you'll understand a little bit about how we go and try to find our place in the large scale structure in the universe. Let's do it. OK, so the story starts with an image that I saw taken from the International Space Station, which really caught my eye because it looked so familiar. So here's what it is. What you're seeing is an image of the two cities of Washington and Baltimore at night taken from the International Space Station. But what struck me so much about this image was how closely it resembles the images that we make of galaxy clusters and the cosmic web. I should probably explain how structure in the universe forms, or at least how we think it forms. Since the universe is mostly composed of dark matter, and by dark matter I mean a mysterious particle that we still haven't found, but we think is out there in enormous quantities and only interacts with itself and with other matter through gravity. And gravity becomes the driving force, no pun intended, of structure formation in the universe. Because when you start off with that initial smooth distribution of matter, what we think happened in the early universe was that there were actually tiny little ripples in that distribution. There were quantum fluctuations, which led to some pockets being slightly more dense than others. And if you then fast forward for 13.7 billion years and let gravity do its thing, those tiny over densities get magnified by gravitational attraction, they pull in more material from around them, which then makes the gravitational force larger, and on and on and on. So we think of structure forming from little things merging together to form bigger things. But if you look on the larger picture, what you actually see is these huge big voids being created as the matter drains away towards the sink points. And then you see filamentary structure forming at the edges of these voids. And where those filaments intersect, you get the densest points, which we call nodes. And it's at those nodes that we think the biggest structures in the universe, galaxy clusters, form. And you put it all together, you've got voids and sheets and filaments and nodes and you've got what we call the cosmic web. Now this is all predicted in theory, but we can also simulate it very well in supercomputers. And uh, there are many groups around the world who specialize in doing this, and I'm very fortunate to be working with some of them as well. I don't do these simulations myself, but I use the outputs from people who do run them. Can we also just observe it when we look up at the sky with telescopes? So the problem with telescopes is that they only capture photons, and we only get photons from the things that glow in the dark. Now, we call dark matter dark. It's not really dark. It's actually transparent. It's see-through because it doesn't emit light, nor does it cast a shadow. So from neither of those perspectives can we capture it with our optical telescopes. There are other ways in which we can find out it's there. One of them is gravitational lensing, which was the subject of my own PhD thesis. That lets us see the invisible and make it visible through understanding its gravitational effect on light. And when we do that, yes, we start to see this very vague imprint of the cosmic web. Most of my research to date has been focused on those really dense regions where the filaments intersect, the galaxy clusters. So they're rare objects, but they do represent the densest regions in the universe. So they're really interesting in terms of understanding how structure formed, but also in understanding how galaxies evolve in those environments. But if we want to understand how these clusters are connected to the cosmic web, we need to look bigger and wider both in our observations and in our simulations. And so this is where the project that I'm working on right now comes in. We're trying to understand the connection between really big galaxy clusters and the cosmic web by tracing the filamentary structure that connects them. Now, luckily, there are lots of methods that have been developed. Again, I haven't developed these, but I happily use them because that's how science works. We share our knowledge and we share our techniques. And so we can take one of these algorithms, which is a topological filament finder, and we can apply it to our data. So when I say our data, I want to introduce a project called the 300 Project. 
And this is a project that looks at really detailed simulations of some of the most massive clusters in a simulated part of the universe. You're now waiting for me to make a connection to Washington and Baltimore. And that's exactly what I'm going to do by demonstrating on this image how we find those filaments. So I'm going to treat this image just as I would a normal 2D astronomical image. And so I'm going to pretend that all of those splodges of light are, say, galaxies. So the first thing I would do on my astronomical image is I would run some sort of galaxy finder. Again, there's many ways to do this, and the output can be different in each time, depending on how you set your parameters. Um, but when I ran one of those detection algorithms on that, I got this image. Okay, so we've got the background in sort of white and orange, and then if you zoom in, you would see that all of these green splodges are actually individual little ellipses where this program, this algorithm, has said, OK, I, I think there's a galaxy there. So once we have that collection of points, we now have to apply some sort of mathematical, some sort of topological algorithm to connect those. And as I said, there are many ways in which you can do this. There's lots of different approaches. Um, but the ones that we use works to find the gradient of the density field. So the densest regions are right in the city center, and they get less dense as you go out. And if you fill up the whole image, or you fill up the whole volume, you get a, a continuous field where the density varies. It works in a similar way to how you would find fingerprints, or how you would trace out a route on a topological map, by going downhill and uphill through the density gradient. So where the density is highest is in the, the close-packed city center. And where it sorts of tails off, you get sort of a downhill sort of feeling. And so the filaments then become the connecting points between the critical points, the, the highest density regions, the lowest density regions, and maybe, as you might find on a mountain pass, the saddle points as well. So when I run that algorithm on our collection of galaxies here, I get this. So this isn't real. This isn't physical. This is a representation, a useful representation of the skeleton of the structure that we see. But it's helpful to us either in terms of tracing out essentially the connections between urban regions and, and even the roads that you see here. And it's helpful to us tracing out the structure in the outskirts of our galaxy clusters. Because we always have to go back to the science here. What are we trying to figure out? We're trying to figure out how these objects formed. Does matter drain down first onto the filaments and then onto the clusters? The galaxies that, that fall into the cluster, do they have a different experience coming in through the filaments than falling straight in? Does their gas get stripped off more readily? Does it change how their star formation properties are? So just as someone living in the suburbs of a big city might have a different lifestyle than someone living right downtown. The same goes for a galaxy. So I just thought I'd show you a concrete example of how we go from individual points, whether those are dark matter halos in our simulation or galaxies in our observations, and we turn that into a density field that we can apply these topological methods to. So what I'm going to show you here is a plate full of Skittles. And I'm going to pour some warm water on here. And we're going to see the color from these Skittles diffuse outwards. That looks amazing. All right, so here we're trying to answer the question, how closely packed are these Skittles or these galaxies? And what we've done here is reproduce something called a tessellation, which allows us to exactly split up the whole space into individual cells. Each cell is kind of owned by one of these Skittles. And the property of each one of these colors is that everything inside this red patch here is closer to that red Skittle than to everything else. It's not exact because these are Skittles. But um, you get the idea. And so this nice sharp line here is exactly halfway between these two points. And what you can see now is that we've got a series of cells which, when you put them together, completely covers that plate. And it also gives us an indication of how closely packed those Skittles are, because where you've got lots of small ones is where you've got the densest regions. This now gives us a mathematical handle on how the density is spread out over the whole plane. And that's what we can then apply our topological algorithms to. 
What would be like the great discovery? What's the holy grail of this research? The real thing that I'm trying to understand is how the whole entire lifetime of a galaxy, taking into account every environment that it's experienced along the way, has affected its evolution. Have galaxies and clusters lost all of their gas and stopped forming stars because they've been sitting there for a very long time? Or have they had it removed before they came in? If they've had it removed, is it because they've just slammed into the galaxy cluster and been stripped of all their gas? Or have they bumbled along in little groups like our own Milky Way and, and Andromeda, fallen down a filament, and then interacted with the cluster environment? In essence, it's just trying to unravel the entire past history of a galaxy when, with observations, all we get is one single snapshot of what it looks like to us here and now. And for me, that's, although I'm an observer, that's where the simulations come in, where they're so helpful and so useful because we can run them forward and backwards in time. We can turn them around and look at them from different directions. We understand not just the bits that go in the dark, but the dark matter as well. We might not get the physics right, and that's a big question to always keep in mind. Um, but by combining the observations with the simulations, we learn more about both ways like this, navigating carefully and slowly to get through the narrows. However, that's not what happens. The Emo takes this corner wide to avoid an oncoming ship. This camera over here is connected to this computer that does all the image acquisition. 